this pumpkin ground mark effect first open content browser this is my texture in here right click create a new material name it and open it in here in blend mode take translucency drag and drop this texture sample from here take and multiply from multiply take vector to radial value here press to connect this to multiply change its value to 0.5 and 0.5 now in palette drag and drop this blend color button connect this here from here take radial grant explosion from radius take lerp now copy this texture sample connect this to lerp alpha from here take texture coordinate now from here take power here right click take dynamic parameter uh, name it uh, eroid now connect this here from here take an another power change its value to point to now from here take uh, saturate from saturate uh, take and multiply now take an another multiply now connect this to b now from here take uh, particle color connect this here from here take an another multiply connect this to b now again copy this texture sample connect this to multiply connect this to base color and to emissive color okay connect this to b and connect this multiply here and connect this to opacity uh i think change the blur for values over here take 5 not point 5 okay um adjust the values of lerp now in here in texture coordinate change the tiling value to 4 and 4 now apply duplicate this material oh i forget to change its name in here um in shading model take unlayer 
Now delete this node. Okay. In here, take and multiply. Connect this here. Now we here. Right click, take texture coordinate. From here, take and multiply. Change its value to 2. From multiply, take subtract. Subtract, take uh, length from length, take divide now uh, connect this to multiply from here, take uh, power. In here, uh, take two multiplies, connect this here and connect this radial grant explosion to multiply and connect this here. Now connect this to particle color. Here connect this to emissive color and opacity. Now move this here. Here take an panel. Connect this here and here. Change the speed values to 0.2 and 0.2. Now in here change its values to 0 and 1. You can see the glow material. Now from timer, take and multiply. From here, take time. Here, right click, take a dynamic parameter. Change its name to Now connect this to here. Now connect this power to this. Now apply it. Now uh, in content browser, right click here the Niagara system, take fountain. Name it and open it. Now delete drag, gravity force, velocity and shape location and spawn rate. Name it or update or add spawn burst instantaneous. Here take uh, 5. The range sprite render. Uh, apply the glow material. Now in initialize particle in mass mode take unset and adjust its size in color mode take random hue um, in here change this value to 0 and 0 tick on the value range change its value to 1 and 2 now in lifetime, here take 1 and 2. Okay, now in spawn burst instantaneous, take um, 4. 
Marine particle update add dynamic material parameter. Now in here click on this arrow take random range float. Here change this to 1 and minus 1. Now in power take uh, 1.4. Now in particle update take scale mesh size. In templates click on this arrow. Here in ta take 2. Oh no. Click on this arrow. Now initialize particle. Change its color to your scene. Now duplicate this emitter. In sprite render, in align to take custom aligning facing mode, take a custom facing vector. In particle update, take a align the sprite to mesh orientation. In here, take 0 and 1. Now, duplicate this emitter. Now, in sprite render, apply the ground mask material. In scale color, here take this, uh, no, 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 in scale RGB, click on this arrow, take vector from float, again take a float from curve, in here click on this arrow, now select this key, take point 2, now in initialize particle, lifetime take 1.4 and 1.8, Now in scale sprite size, select this key. In here, take point 2. Now in spawn bus instantaneous spawn time, take point zero 0.05. Now save this. Go to third person map. Uh, drag and drop this Niagara here. And play and see. Yes, our Niagara is over. Now we are applying this Niagara to this uh, enemy. First open content browser, right click take, blueprint glass take, actor, name it and open it. In here, for example, I am adding a cube. Here search for... Um, Simulation physics, tick on it. Okay. Um, this is my pumpkin mesh. I'm taking it. Now compile. This is my enemy monster blueprint. In here, add a box collision. Now uh, again add a Niagara particle system. In here uh, apply the Niagara we made now. In details uh, tick off uh, auto activate. Now go to event graph. Uh, in here, right click on it, add event, take on component, begin overlap. From other actor, take uh, um, BP pumpkin, we made now. From here, take uh, activate Niagara. From activate, uh, take delay. Delay duration is um, 0.5. From delay, take destroy actor. Um, from
this Niagara take deactivate connect this here compile go to third person map uh, drag and drop this here now play and see oh it's not working um, in here oh I forget to tick on the simulation physics compile go to third person map and again play and see oh something is problem in blueprint okay um, yes I forget to connect this connect this distractor to other actor now compile go to third person map play and see now you can see the ground mark Niagara and thank you for watching Siri gaming channel don't forget to subscribe it